Chapter 6, Life is a Temporary Assignment, which is basically a repeat of Chapter 4. To make the best use of your life, you must never forget two truths. First, compared with eternity, life is extremely brief. Well, yes, that's true. Compared with eternity, life is extremely brief. <laughs> uh, he says also that Earth is only a temporary residence. I actually agree with these things, Rick, and I, I actually would even say that I use them to improve my life because keeping these things in mind, that I'm only here on Earth for a short time, and that my, my life is finite, that I am mortal. I don't think I'm eternal. I think I'm mortal. Those things help me to make the best use of my life by keeping my focus on this life, not on some fantastical afterlife that I have no reason, no credible good reason to believe in. Next, Rick is trying to convince us that we don't really belong here. We're not actually earthlings. He says, the Bible uses terms like alien, pilgrim, foreigner, stranger, visitor, and traveler to describe our brief stay on earth. Um, even if we're only here for short lives, which <laughs> I'm with you on that, Rick, why would that mean that we weren't from here? I mean, we're born here. But he says, no, 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 Christians should carry spiritual green guards to remind them that their citizenship is in heaven. They need a reminder because it's not like, it's not like they've ever been to heaven or they were born there, done anything else that would actually make them a citizen. But Rick Warren says they should carry spiritual green cards like people in California have to do with real green cards. He really does say that, page 48. Real believers understand that there is far more to life than just the few years we live on this planet. Well, it would take belief to think that there was more to life than life. It would take faith or something like that because it's not like there's any evidence, Ricky. Rick makes sure we know it's very important not to uh, embrace life. You shouldn't do that. No, 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 no. When we flirt with the temptations of this world, Things like living for the here and now and adopting the values of the world around us, which apparently are bad, um, because God calls it spiritual adultery. Apparently, when we don't do what the Bible says, it's spiritual adultery. Huh. How come Rick Warren doesn't stone people to death? Really, Rick? I mean, it's not like anywhere in the Bible does God say, oh, and that part about homosexuals, I didn't mean it anymore. I know you hate gay people, Rick. You might say you have gay friends, but you are despicable to them. So your actions certainly indicate that you absolutely hate gay people who God custom designed that way genetically when he picked their parents. Um, yeah, so uh, what was that? Oh, fuck you, Rick Warren, and you're a hypocrite for not following the Bible. Sadly, many Christians have betrayed their king. They have foolishly concluded that because they live on earth, it is their home. Do you not think that where you live is your home, Rick? Do you honestly not believe that Earth is your home? Are you E.T.? Where do you come from if Earth is not your home? Where else would be your home? I mean, you seem to think that heaven is home, but no Christian's ever been there. They live here. Where you live equals where your home is. Unless you mean something like a home country that you came from, but you didn't come from heaven now, did you, Rick? No, you came from your mother's vagina. This is pretty funny. Rick says that with all the fascinating attractions, mesmerizing media, and enjoyable experiences available today, it's easy to forget that the pursuit of happiness is not what life is all about. But the, see, when you talk about fascinating attractions, mesmerizing in media, etc., all I can think is the rock show that is every Sunday morning service at Saddleback Church. I mean, it's not like he's actually opposed to technology and laser lights and all the rest when it comes to being a rock star for Jesus. Uh, apparently, you're just not supposed to like it if it actually makes you happy. <laughs> Only as we remember that life is a test a trust and a temporary assignment, will the appeal of these things lose their grip on our lives? Ah, only as we remember that life is meaningless and will end soon and that we should spend the whole thing just kissing the ass of Rick Warren's God, only then will life become not about our happiness or the happiness of anyone around us, but it'll just become about the happiness of God. 
Why would this be better, morally or actually? Here's Rick's own apologetics. The fact that Earth is not our ultimate home explains why, as followers of Jesus, we experience difficulty, sorrow, and rejection in this world. Wait a minute, I thought it was part of God's plan to test us and make things really shitty for us. Wait a second, now you're saying it's not all part of God's plan? Huh. Oh wait, I love this. It also explains why some of God's promises seem unfulfilled. Some prayers seem unanswered and some circumstances seem unfair. I used to babysit a little boy named Harrison Johnson. He was two years old. He fell in a yellow jacket's nest and got stung 437 times. His devoted, extremely Christian parents, people who really did think about the eternal implications and not the mortal ones, people who really did put God first in all their lives, people who spent their money according to the way they thought God wanted them to, and people who believed in faith healing because it's in the Bible. They spent seven hours praying for their son and he died. But I gotta ask Rick, did he just seem dead? Did that prayer just seem unanswered? That prayer for Harrison to not die at two years old? Does that just seem unanswered, Rick? As C.S. Lewis observed, all that is not eternal is eternally useless. <laughs> the Bible said, well, okay, uh, yeah. If in eternity, things that are finite would be pretty useless. Of course, we don't live in eternity. We live in a finite world. We live mortal lives. So the fact that things aren't eternal doesn't actually mean that they're insignificant to us. We're not eternal, and yet we find ourselves very significant. The Bible says we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. This is one of my grandmother's favorite verses. My cult leading, insane, faith healing, batshit crazy grandmother loves this verse. She always taught about how there was the real, the, the physical sight realm and then the spiritual realm. I think she and uh, I think she and Ricky here could have had a few good conversations. Apparently, they share delusions. All right. Remember in the prologue how we were promised that you know following God's will for our lives or God's plan, God's will for our lives was going to reduce stress and make us happy and all those other things. Yeah. Um, except now that's the opposite of what Rick's saying. Cause he's saying, well, Paul was faithful yet he ended up in prison. John the Baptist was faithful, but he was beheaded. Millions of faithful people have been martyred, have lost everything or have come to the end of life with nothing to show for it. And this Rick Warren wants for you too. Yay. Why do people keep buying this book? Why do people give Rick Warren money? Why do people follow Rick Warren's teachings or attend his church? <laughs> you need to treat life as a temporary assignment and serve faithfully expecting your promised reward in eternity. So you aren't doing this because it's the right thing to do. You aren't even doing this because you love God and God wants it of you. You're doing it for a promised reward in eternity. Rick! Morality. You may want to look it up. Find out something about it. Learn why the rest of us find it useful. All right, everybody. YouTube reading group. Purpose Driven Life Day 6. Point to ponder. This world is not my home. Despite the fact that Rick doesn't actually have evidence for that. Because Bible verses don't count as evidence. Unless I get to bring up ones that are also ridiculously bullshit that you, Rick, don't believe or don't follow. Verse to remember. Giggy's favorite from 2 Corinthians 4.18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Hmm. Or made up bullshit. Question to consider. How should the fact that life on earth is just a temporary assignment change the way I am living right now? Well, see, it, it, temporary assignment is just a weird phrase. But we are mortal. And the fact that I am mortal does influence my life. It means that I take more advantage of it, uh, that I make sure to enjoy it now while I'm here, that I try to do the most good while I'm here. I don't expect to have an afterlife. Once I'm dead, I, I don't think I'll be able to impact anything for anyone beyond whatever words of mine survive. So it's really important 
that I do as much as I can while I'm here for people who are real and who are also here. Everybody in YouTube, have great, godless, and non-delusional days. Peace.